All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to be going over some uh, famous American soldiers who were in World War I. We're going to talk about people who were famous beforehand, before the war started, but they joined. We're going to talk about people who became famous during World War I, and then people who served in the military, and then when the war ended, they became famous uh, for whatever reason. Okay, we're going to talk about those people today. All right, so here's your warm-up picture. Um, as always, the first question is asking you to analyze the picture and tell me what is going on. So interpret it. Look at the background. What do you see? Who's that guy right there? What, are they, what is he holding? Okay, now the second question asks you, from your own assumption, from your own point of view, and again, from what you've seen in your life, what you've heard, and things like that, if there was a war going on, what do you think most people would choose to do? Work or fight? And why do you say that? So if you say work, explain why. If you say fight, explain why. Okay? So, pause the video, write your response, because we're moving on in three, two. One. All right. So first off, we're going to talk about the civilian soldiers, people like that. Um, first off, I have to talk about this guy, Henry Johnson. Okay. Now the thing is, Henry Johnson was drafted um, uh, from the U.S. And the thing is, he started off doing manual labor. He was like chopping down trees. Um, he was, you know, cooking. He was doing. You know, fixing this, cleaning that. And it wasn't until the French army was like really, really hurting that they were like asking the U.S., hey, we need some soldiers. And this is where those 44,000 um, African Americans would be fighting in Europe. So he was one of those. Now, he and this other guy named uh, Needham Roberts, they took basically a foxhole position. Foxhole is a, um, a hole in the ground, basically. They're there, and they're just keeping watch. Around 2 in the morning, 20 German soldiers attack. Now, right away, um, Johnson and Roberts are hurt. They're shot. Okay. Now, Roberts is hurt pretty bad. Johnson, however, the guy up on top you see there, he starts taking grenades and pulling the pins and chucking them at the German soldiers. Okay, so they're going off. <laughs> then he gets his rifle, starts aiming, bam, 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 starts shooting, put another clip in, bam, 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 put another clip in, bam, bam, bam. And eventually his rifle jams. <laughs> so when that happens, he basically charges with his uh, with his rifle as a club and he's swinging it, he's swinging it, and he's beating uh, Germans. Um, and eventually, the uh, the rifle busts, so now he can't use it as a club anymore. So then he takes his knife, pulls it out, and starts stabbing and killing German soldiers. Now, while the, all this is happening, he is being shot and stabbed by the bayonets on the the rifles. He suffered a t total of 21 combined um, shots, gunshot wounds, and stab wounds. Okay, so he probably more likely got like shot like five, six times and got stabbed like 15 times or got shot eight times and stabbed 13 times, you know. Um, but the thing is, the Germans retreated. He actually took out 12 of the 20 guys. So when word spread that this is what he did, the French uh, military basically said, you know what, dude, you deserve like the highest medal we got. And they gave it to him. Okay. Now, when he comes back to the Americas, he, you know, comes in and nobody praises him. No one hails him as a hero. Um, they don't even acknowledge him as a soldier. Yeah. So he doesn't receive any accommodations, any recognition, any medals or anything like that. When he comes back to the United States, um, it's not until I believe it's 1990, like 
93, 94, some of that, that he is acknowledged. And I believe it's not until 2009 he receives, like, the Medal of Honor. You know, it's a posthumous. He's already dead, but, like, his grandchildren um, accept the honor. So, yeah. Henry Johnson right there. The next guy, the one below, that is Alvin York. Now, I'm sure you may have heard of Muhammad Ali, the boxer. Uh, what you may or may not know about Muhammad Ali is that he didn't want to fight in Vietnam. He basically said, hey, that's against my religion. Well, Alvin York tried the same thing back in the like 1914, 15, and the army said no. <laughs> no. Now, the thing about Alvin York is that makes him unique and special is that he's a crack shot. He grew up in those Appalachian Mountain, you know, those mountain people, those country people who have to hunt for their food. He would hunt squirrels. Now, squirrels are not the little slow little things. They are fast. They are tiny. They can move. So for him to be able to shoot and kill squirrels, that tells you he's a good, pretty good crack shot. And the thing is, if you get too close, they're gone, you know. So he was a crack shot. Now, in one famous battle, Alvin York is picking off Germans. Boom, 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 right? He actually flanks them and then uh, basically tells them, hey, I, you guys are my prisoners, you know? And he, you know, kills in, 20, in total uh, 20 German soldiers. Sorry, I had to sneeze right there. Uh, but yeah, he kills 20 German soldiers. I mean, again, he's a crack shot. And he basically captures 132 German soldiers all by himself. Yeah, pretty impressive. Okay. Uh, the next guy, Frank Luke, he was known as the balloon buster. Okay. What, those, what that meant was, yes, the Germans used hot air balloons to kind of spy on what's happening in the field. You know, they would send little messages down with, you know, little flags or whatever. And basically saying like, hey, French soldiers are two miles south. Um, the Russians are three miles um, southeast. You know, things like that. So Frank Luke would be flying by and just brrr and shoot those uh, balloons down. Um, every time a person, a pilot succeeds in the air they call it a victory he had 18 victories in 18 days that's pretty pretty impressive um now the thing is he was told hey we have some balloons in the air but you're not going to go there you know things like that he disobeyed his orders um and went after those balloons and what ends up happening is he gets shot at and his plane crashes, and um, he doesn't die right there and then. Um, he actually like, is able to get out, and supposedly he shot at some German soldiers and then died from his wounds. Okay. So, again, cocky, um, considered very reckless, but he was good. Um, he was a good pilot. The next guy, Dan Daly, is considered the one of the most famous and and arguably the greatest Marine of all time. Okay, um, before even the war started, the man already had two medals of honor. That should tell you something. That's those medal of honor. They don't just give you uh, with the wink and you know because you winked and smiled. No, you have to really earn those things. And he earned them. Now, at the Battle of Belle Wood, um, he and his men are in a trench, and they're taking heavy, 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 heavy attacks by the Germans. And a lot of his men are getting shredded. You know, they're they're dying. Now he is basically being told, "Hey, um, stay in your your trench," you know, and things like that. And he's like, "No, no, we." We need to get out of here, kick those Germans in the teeth, and then they'll fall back. You know, because they have the confidence of just mowing us down. 
every second we waste, they're getting more confident and they're getting, uh, you know, more like thinking they got this. So he does a counterattack. He actually crawls out of the foxhole or out of the trenches and tells his men, come on, you SOBs. Do you want to live forever? And they charge and they actually do fight back the Germans. Um, now, some of the people are like, oh, my God, that was crazy. Wait until June 10th, 1918. He, basically the same thing, in no man's land, he took out a machine gun nest. Now, if I don't remember if you got the little um, uh, little map of how the uh, terrain was, but here is the trenches right here. Behind, and here's like no man's land. Trenches right here. Behind the trench, there's barbed wire, and then there's the machine gunners. And these guys would just like mow down people. He actually charged the machine uh, gunners, killed them, killed the commander, and went inside the bunker that's connected to the machine gun nest and took 14 people prisoners. It gets even better. Later that day, he goes out into no man's land, taking fire, and brings out several men to safety. He actually goes into no man's land, taking shots, and pulls them to safety. Now, I asked this question before. How many of you guys would actually save your best friend? A lot of you guys said no. You know, some of you guys said, oh, I would try my hardest, but as soon as danger came by, no, 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 I'm going back. That's a natural reaction. This guy just went out there. So he was very brave. And this is, as like uh, one of my friends told me, who's a Marine, this is the Marine that um, every Marine should try to be like. You know, this is the epitome of a Marine. Here's the problem. He was actually recommended for the third Medal of Honor. And the military was like... <laughs> Three medals of honor, we've never given anyone three. Granted, he, if anyone should have it, it should be him. But, I mean, ah, that just doesn't sit well. So, what he got instead was the um, British and, and French highest medal honors. Um, the Distinguished Service Cross and the French um, Med Military Medal. Okay. So that's what he got instead of a third Medal of Honor. So here's your first question. Between Johnson, York, Luke, and Daly, which person do you feel is the most impressive and why? Okay, the writing prompts on the bottom there for you. The person I am most impressed with is Johnson, Luke, uh, York, or Daly because, and explain why. Okay. Now, I had some students in class saying, well, I don't know, which one? Which one's better? I'm like, that's your interpretation. You tell me who's more impressive to you. Because the thing is, all these guys were very impressive. But I'm asking you, which one do you feel was even just a little bit more above than the other ones? That's fine. Tell me who that person was. Okay? By choosing one, you're not dishonoring or saying the other ones suck. No. Just you, one you feel is deserves a little bit more recognition. What they do is a little bit more impressive in your point of view. Okay, so write your response, pause the video because we're moving on in three, two, one. Now we go to authors, artists, and actors. The first guy we're going to be talking about is Ernest Hemingway. Now, Hemingway was already a great journalist and author before the war started. He signed up to be in the military, but during the exam, they found out that he had a uh, eye defection. And they were like, yeah, we can't have you going into battle. And he's like, I want to serve. And they're like, we get that, but we can't have you there. We're sorry. So instead, he joined the Red Cross, and he was driving the ambulance, taking injured soldiers from the front to the cities 
where uh, uh, they could be treated. So again, he still served. He still did something during the uh, World War One. The next guy is this man right here. You see in the picture. That's Humphrey Bogart. Um, Bogart was basically a nobody when the war started. He joined the Navy and he helped transport soldiers from the ship to land and back again. Okay. Um, was it like blazing gunfire, things like that? No, no. But the thing is, he joined the Navy. He signed up and joined, you know. Um, so he did his part in the war. Now, after that, he goes into Hollywood and he becomes an, an American icon in the early movies in the 20s and 30s and 40s, you know, partially in the 50s. Um, some of his great movies like The Maltese Falcon, Casablanca, Treasure of Sierra Madre, um, The Cane Mutiny, you know, The African Queen, really good movies. I would suggest you watch them. I know they're in black and white and things like that. And they might be so boring. But you should really give them a try. They're great movies. Especially Casablanca. Okay. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Now this person uh, was an author and a writer. Uh, but they really gained notoriety from the 1920s after the war. Uh, he wrote a book called The Great Gatsby. Which if you were a freshman and sophomore in a regular high school... You would more likely have read that book. The next person was Horace Pippin. Okay, now Horace Pippin was an African American, you know, and the thing is, he too uh, was picked of the forty-four thousand to go fight. Now, he was a painter, but he got shot in his right arm, his painting arm. So when the nineteen twenties came. He still continued to paint, except his hand was like this. He would take his left hand, grab it by the wrist, and guide his right hand to paint. And he would um, mainly do portraits and things like that. And some of them were really, really impressive. You know, if you when you especially when you know the history of who he was and um, what happened to him. The next guy, Bill Bojangles Robinson. Now. Robinson was one of those uh, African Americans who did not fight. Okay. But the thing is, he did entertain the troops because Bojangles Robinson is one of the greatest dancers uh, in cinema. Okay. Right, right there with Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly and all these guys. He is right there. And um, what happened was, he was told, hey, um, we're going to have you entertain the troops. And he goes, like, what troops? And they're like, the white troops. And we'll pay you. He said, how about this? Let me train, or let me entertain the white and black troops, and I'll do that for free. For both of them. I'll do it for free. If you let me um, entertain the black troops. So the military's like, oh, hell, we don't have to pay. Why not? So they agreed. So he... Uh, got to entertain the white and black soldiers. So the black soldiers were able to enjoy some entertainment, some jokes and dancing and things like that. You know, it's all because of him. All right. Some other notable Americans, Edwin Hubble. Now this guy served in the military. He got out and then he became an astronomer and he basically discovered that the universe was not set. The universe is not just like a little, uh, sphere and there's an edge to it no he he basically discovered that the universe is expanding and it's continuously expanding even right now as we're speaking it's moving um so the telescope that's used to take pictures in deep deep space take pictures of supernovas and things like that black holes and all that that's called the hubble telescope that's named after him because of his contribution the next guy, Tyrus Ty Cobb. Um, before Babe Ruth, he was the ultimate superstar. He played baseball for the Detroit Athletics and the Philadelphia Athletics. Or, sorry, Detroit Tigers and the Philadelphia Athletics. Now, at the time of his retirement, he actually held like every single batting record, 
stolen bases, uh, triples, doubles, you know, singles. The guy had basically every record, again, before Babe Ruth. Um, he actually still to this day holds um, some records. One of them is the highest career batting average, which is at 366. And he has the most uh, batting titles, which is a safe bet is 11. Some sites say 12, but that's controversial. So it's easy to say 11. And just in case you're wondering, that's a picture of him. Not the guy getting kicked. He's the one who's kicking the guy. And the cleats he's wearing aren't like the plastic cleats we have now. They were actually like the nails. They were like nails on the bottom of the sh those shoes. And he's kicking the guy right in the leg and right in the junk. You know, and he would slide in the first base with his leg kind of up like this and stab the person on the base um, on the shin. The shin is the area be uh, below your knee. He would stab him with those nails on his shoes like that. Dirty player, yes, but he was really good. Um, Christopher Christy Mathewson. He served in the Army. Okay, Now, he was actually a baseball player when uh, the war happened. And uh, he was a pitcher for the New York Giants and the Cincinnati Reds. And then he managed them, too. He would also become a Hall of Famer. He was a really good player. The last guy on this list is Wesley Branch Rickey. He actually served in the Army. Okay, Now, he was a catcher for the St. Louis Browns. But what really solidified him in baseball history was not what he did as a player, but as a general manager. He is the man responsible for um, signing Jackie Robinson to the Brooklyn Dodgers in, uh, in 1949. And that broke the color barrier and it improved baseball so much more. And it's all because of that man. Okay, so here's the thing. Not every single actor, athlete, or celebrity served in the war. Um, one of the greatest, you know, actors at that time, Charlie Chaplin, did not fight. He did not even sign up, things like that. And people were, like, saying he's a coward. He's a, you know, oh, your fans are going to go fight, but you can't. Oh, you're just living the celebrity life, living the big life, getting this money and stuff like that. He did movies to basically show like soldiers are brave men and things like that, you know, um, but still people talk crap about him. Now, there were many of them that did things to serve our country. There's two main things they did. The first one is war bonds, right? So if you've seen the movie uh, Captain America, the first soldier, when he's there with the girls and he has a shield and he's reading the little um, the little notes and things like that. And he punches that Adolf Hitler looking guy. He's selling war bonds. And people would buy them. You know. And that's what some of these celebrities did. They try to get, uh, raise money for the government. So they would s go out selling war bonds. Okay. In World War One, the United States sold 20 million. Well, 20 million people bought war bonds. And it basically raised about seventeen billion dollars, you know, for the war. Oh, excuse me. Um, the other thing that celebrities did, and athletes and you know actors and stuff like that, was do public services, which would be like giving tips and reminders to Americans to hey use less, recycle, sacrifice, you know, in your everyday life because hey your husband, your brother. You know, your neighbor, your best friend is in war. And he, you know, if you, like right there in that picture, don't waste bread, you know. Use one bread so that you make, you make it last longer. Because if you buy from the store, that bread could have gone to those soldiers and things like that. You know, help support the soldiers in the country. You know, having kids go into the the junkyard and getting scrap metal and things like that. That's what they did. Okay. All right, so here's your next question. If there was another war going on right now, do you think actors, athletes, and celebrities would serve our would serve our country more in fighting, like going to war, or do you think 
being out of it, selling war bonds, doing public service announcement, doing the public service events. You know, what do you think? So think of some celebrities right now in our country and ask yourself, do you think they would serve better at going to war or um, doing things at home? Again, war, selling war bonds and, um, you know, public service announcements and things like that. What do you think? And why do you believe that? Okay. So pause the video, write your response because we're moving on in three, two, one. Yeah, I forgot this one had no exit ticket. <laughs> All right. So um, if you got this um, paper, you also should have gotten the research paper, too, uh, where you it has a list of battles on one page and it says like uh, research of an actor or soldier, you know, things like that. And what you're supposed to do is research a battle. Find one, answer those questions that's on that page page on that side then flip it then you're going to go look at these guys like johnson um york you know um daily bogart robinson all these guys and find out some stuff about them okay you're finding out about the people we're talking about in this uh lesson so if you did not get that paper or if i didn't give it to you for whatever reason uh, be sure you let me know. Hey, Martinez, um, I need that paper for the research and I will give it to you. Okay. So with that being said, you guys, you take care, you be safe and I'll see you later. Okay.